Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial about the secret to solving cubic equations. And the first thing I want to point at is the word secret. It might sound a little bit exaggerated, but actually the solution to cubic equations was a secret that was well kept in the 1400 and 1500. The solution to some particular cubic equations was first discovered by Scipione del Ferro. He wanted to keep his solution secret because in those times one had to win public challenges in order to get and keep an academic job by demonstrating an ability to solve problems that others could not. So he revealed his solution only to a few people who swore an oath of secrecy. One of them, Gerolamo Cardano, made some further research and discovered the general solution to all cubic equations and published it. He was accused of breaking the oath of secrecy, but he did not, since what he published was his own solution for all cubic equations, something that nobody else knew. And this is this general solution that I'm going to reveal. By the way, you see the font that appear in this video? These are true type fonts that make use of cubic Bezier curves. To draw each character, the computer had to solve cubic equations in order to determine which pixels to turn on. Small world. All right, consider the general equation ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals zero, where the coefficients a, b, c, d are real numbers. We can safely assume that a is non-zero, otherwise that wouldn't be a cubic equation. Thus, we can divide the whole equation by a, and then we can always do the change of variable x equals y minus y0, where y is the new unknown and y0 is an arbitrary constant. This leads to an equation that looks more complicated, but it really is not. We can expand it and group the terms that correspond to different powers of y. And here comes a first simplification. We can choose the value that we want for y0. So we can get rid of the quadratic term by choosing the value y0 equals minus b over 3a. Of course, since we made a choice for y0, we must substitute the same value in the other terms. So if we clean up a little bit, we can rewrite our general cubic equation as a so-called depressed cubic equation that doesn't have any quadratic term. So the problem has been simplified. It is still non-trivial though. The idea is to do another change of variable, but we can't do the same type as the previous one by adding an arbitrary constant, otherwise it will undo what we just did and make the quadratic term reappear. Instead, we can try to add a constant divided by the new variable. So here we substitute y equals w plus alpha divided by w and get a new expression. Like before, we can expand and group terms leading to a new expression that simplifies greatly if we choose for the arbitrary constant the value alpha equals minus p over 3. With this choice, the equation turns into a trivial form of a sextic equation. Indeed, the equation is trivial to solve if we perform the last change of variable z equals w cubed since we end up with a quadratic equation, which I assume you know how to solve. You can easily check that it admits the two solutions, z plus or minus, shown here. So, the problem is nearly solved, but we have to be careful when going back to the solution for x. Keep in mind that we have two solutions for z, but since we want to solve a cubic equation, we need three solutions for x. First, we need to go back from z to w. The reflex is to take the cube root of z plus or minus. But since the equation z equals w cube is a cubic equation for w, it must have three solutions. 
you can check that the cube root of z plus or minus multiplied by exponential i 2 pi over 3 times k, where k equals minus 1, 0, or 1, is also a solution since the cube of the exponential is equal to 1 for any value of k. But now we have six solutions since we have two possible signs and three possible values for k. That's why I added the lower index plus or minus and the upper index k to w. So three of these solutions must be duplicates of the others, but which ones? Well, for the time being, let us keep the six solutions and go back to the variable y. Remember, y was defined as w plus alpha over w with alpha equals p over 3. So we get this disgusting expression for y, and it gets even worse when we replace z by its expression in terms of p and q. However, we can work out the expression of the inverse of z plus or minus and find that it simplifies as 27 z minus or plus divided by p cubed. If we plug this expression for the inverse of z into the previous equation, then we obtain a much nicer expression that is symmetrical. y plus or minus is equal to the cube root of z plus or minus times the exponential with a plus sign plus the cube root of z minus or plus times the exponential with a minus sign. Now, because this expression is symmetrical, it is easy to see that we have three pairs of identical solutions. Indeed, it is easy to check that for k equals zero, the value of y with the plus sign is equal to the value of y with the minus sign. Likewise, the value with the plus sign and k equals 1 is equal to the value with the minus sign and k equals minus 1, and vice versa. This means that it doesn't matter which sign we choose for z. Thus, in the following, we can ignore the solution for z with the minus sign, and we are left with the three solutions that we need. This way, we can write the explicit solution for y, which depends on k, but no longer on any choice of a sign. And finally, the solutions for x are obtained by subtracting b over 3a. Okay, so we have our three solutions. Now, it is useful to determine whether these solutions are real or not. For this purpose, we can define the so-called discriminant delta equals 4p cubed plus 27q squared. We can notice that this quantity is just equal to 108 times the argument of the square root that appears in the expression of y. So if delta is positive, then the square root is real. If delta is negative, then the square root is imaginary. And of course, if delta is zero, then the square root is zero. So we see in the expression of y that if delta is greater than zero, then the two cubic roots are two distinct real numbers. But these cubic roots are each multiplied by conjugate imaginary exponentials, except if k equals zero. As a result, if delta is positive, we have one real solution corresponding to k equals zero and two complex conjugate solutions for k equals one and k equals minus one. If delta equals zero, the square root is zero and the two cubic roots in y are equal. Thus, y is a sum of two real numbers for k equals zero and a sum of two complex conjugate numbers for k equals one and k equals minus one which is also a real number. The result is the same whether k equals 1 or k equals minus 1, so we have three real solutions, one that is distinct and the two others that are equal. If delta is negative, the two cube roots are complex conjugate 
and y itself is a sum of complex conjugate numbers for any value of k. Thus, the result is a real number. So we have three distinct real solutions. So we have the complete solution to any cubic equation, and we could stop here. But for delta negative or zero, where the solution are all real, it is a little bit strange that we have to express them as sums of complex conjugate terms. We can actually work out the solution and express it in terms of purely real numbers. For delta negative or zero, we can switch the sign of the square roots argument and multiply it by the imaginary number i. This allows us to express z in complex algebraic form, that is, as a real part plus i times an imaginary part. Knowing z in algebraic form, it is now easy to express it in exponential form, that is, as a modulus times a phase factor by using the conversion formulas that result directly from the figure. This leads to the following expression for the exponential form of z plus or minus. The advantage of the exponential form is that it makes it easy to take the cube root of the complex number z plus or minus. Simply take the cube root of the modulus and divide the phase angle by 3. Substituting this expression into the expression for y and using Euler's formula for converting a sum of conjugate exponentials into a cosine, we obtain a real expression. And finally, x is obtained by subtracting b over 3a. And we are done. You know how to solve any cubic equation. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up and share it on your social network. Do not forget to register to my channel so that you can discover my other tutorials. Thanks for watching.